Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish it, believe me. She wants to abolish our Second Amendment. I think they didn't deny it. I don't think anybody denied it. Other presidents did not call it. They'd write letters, and some presidents didn't do anything. Many people have come out and said, I'm right. You really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Hello and welcome to Fallacious Trump, the podcast where we use the insane ramblings of President Camacho to explain logical fallacies. I'm your host, Jim. And I'm your other host, Mark. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that results in bad or invalid arguments. The logical fallacy we're looking at this week is the no true Scotsman fallacy, also known as the appeal to purity. So no true Scotsman is a really good fallacy and it's one that I've been waiting a while to mm. do because it's, it's quite a popular one, actually. Yeah. Um, but... I hadn't got a really good example from Trump up to up until recently, right? Um, because this this sometimes needs a couple of levels of reasoning, and he doesn't tend to go for Use that as much. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, basically the uh, the name comes from a, a kind of a story that was told about a Scotsman reading his morning paper, his Glasgow Herald, and there is a. a story about a horrific attack in Brighton, a sex attack. Mm -hmm. And the Scotsman says, oh, no Scotsman would would do something as bad as that. Yeah. And then the next day, he's reading his paper again, and there's a an even worse attack happened in Edinburgh. Yeah. And so he changes his story and says, oh, well, no true Scotsman would do mm. that. Yeah. So it's a kind of moving the goalpost thing that recategorizes uh, a, a group of people that you have decided are a, a, of a particular kind and it changes the rules to exclude people that mm. don't fit in with your your ideas. Right. I'm surprised we haven't got an example because Trump does, <laughs> does that all the time. He? he does, but yeah, he doesn't. He he does recategorize things yeah. and change his his opinions on things, but it's rare that it's it's very clear what his categories were in the first place right. or where yeah, he's excluding yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. So uh, he's recently started. Uh, more using rhino, which means Republican in name only. Oh, okay. For people that that he that are Republicans, essentially, yeah. they're in the Republican Party, but they've done something that he disagrees with. Okay. So here's our example. I will only get bad if I say, how many ventilators do you need, Governor? A thousand would be great. I said, nope, I'm going to send you 10,000. And then you'll call up from the media. You'll say, how did Trump do? We're not happy he didn't send us enough ventilators. Because that's called politics. But if you look at what's happening, that, and I'm even surprised, the governors are saying all good things, but the Democrat governors and a couple of rhinos, frankly, they're rhinos, that's all they are, one rhino in particular, but the governors are saying great things. So, yeah, the rhinos that he's talking about there yeah. <laughs> are Republican governors that are disagreeing with him about what he should be doing. Basically, okay. they're complaining about lack of PPE and ventilators yeah. and things like that. And the one rhino in particular that he's talking about, we're pretty sure he doesn't actually mention him, yeah. but it's probably Larry Hogan, right. who has been the kind of most outspoken Republican governor about about how the you know the federal government is basically failing people yeah. by not not giving out supplies properly and things like that. So it's quite interesting that actually he says, you know, uh, they asked for a thousand. I said I'll give you ten. And then yeah. you, the He's you, the media, lying. yeah. <laughs> then you, the media, call me up. As, no, or they, well, I'm, and I'm assuming that he means the governors. Um, then no, the media. He says the, he kind of gives them the media a free pass. Then and says, <laughs> you know, the media call me up and say, well, you're not delivering because that ten thousand you said you get, we haven't got them. And and he said, yeah, it's fine. That's politics. But then when a politician does it, it's it, they're rhinos. They're not true Republicans yeah, because it's, they should it's be weird. going along with the spin. <laughs> he what he's doing? He's randomly claiming that the only reason governors are saying negative things is it's not because there's anything negative going on. Because what's happening is they're getting ten times what they're asking for, but they still, because they're Democrats or rhinos, yeah. are claiming that they're not happy. Right, just just for politics purposes. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> not for the fact that actually what because, they need is a hundred thousand ventilators, and you're only giving yeah. us ten. Yeah, or claiming that the hospital staff are stealing the PPEs yeah. instead, and and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not that there isn't there aren't enough 
Trump is sending out more than people are asking for, and they're just complaining because they're Democrats yeah. or rhinos. Yeah, they're, well, they're, so. yeah, they're not real Republicans. Yeah, not real Republicans, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, you. That's. I mean, how you how you would counter it? You just have to say, in your opinion, well, they yeah. are. They just don't. They just don't agree with you. That's. The, the, you know, the... Yeah, and the, I mean, that's part of this is, you know, obviously there are some categories which people are in because of uh, circumstances beyond their control, like Scotsman, <laughs> yeah. for example. If you're Scottish, <laughs> that's not a matter of opinion. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but if you're Republican, your for example, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if you're a Republican, it's because those are the views you hold or, right. the, or the party that you most align yourself yeah. with. Or represent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so Republican in name only is basically used to make a claim that someone is is saying they're a Republican, but actually they aren't acting like a Republican yeah. would act in your opinion based on your criteria for what a Republican is. And it, I mean, it's very similar with Tony Blair here was very much a a kind of Tory in Labour clothing to some people yeah, yeah, with yeah. with some of his, his views. And and it it is a way of, of kind of basically questioning someone's real motives or real opinions um, in opposition to what they say mm. they believe yeah. or how they yeah. categorise themselves. And it and it also allows you to continue to maintain your argument. So the Scotsman himself Saying, "Oh dear, oh, he wouldn't, a Scotsman wouldn't do that," and then a Scotsman does. Instead of go, instead of going back on it and saying, "Yeah, do you know what I was wrong?" It turns out a Scotsman. Yeah. I'm shocked. A Scotsman could do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's actually it's a it's a double down. It's a it's another version yeah, of what Trump. Trump no, loves. Trump loves that. <laughs> He's. It's not possible for him to do otherwise. He's. I don't think I've. He's never actually said sorry, has he? He's not even done a polit politician's sorry, which is, I'm sorry if you feel that way. I'm sorry if, like Pretty Patel did uh, the other day, I'm sorry if people are upset by yeah. the fact that there's... No, he doesn't. He's not sorry if no. people are upset. No, he, no. Quite, he loves it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's glad. Yeah. That so, <laughs> yeah, it gives you that opportunity to to double down and and uh, avoid correcting yourself and mm. being corrected. Um, but yeah, it also gives you an excuse to say, you know, it is these these people aren't really um, saying these things because they're true. They're saying them to get at me. Yeah. They're yeah, saying yeah. them to attack me. Yeah. Um, and it's because they're not really Republicans. Yeah. Because all Republicans. It's basically. Um, it's it's a bit of circular reasoning as well, and petitio principi, the begging the question, mm. because um, you're starting from the assumption that all Republicans agree with Trump. Yeah. And therefore, if someone doesn't agree with Trump, yeah, um, it isn't that you were wrong in your assumption. It's that they aren't real Republicans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a way of doing an insult, but it, but it's not even a backhanded insult. It's a it's a complaint about being attacked, which is disguising an attack. So he's saying, well, they would say that because they're not real Republicans. So, yeah. so they're getting at me. But actually what he's doing is getting at them. He's he's belittling their um, position whilst remaining the victim. Yeah, absolutely. Persecution. Yeah. <laughs> They're all, they're all out to get me. They're all out to get me, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a true African dictator, yeah. And now is the time, I think, for Marx British politics. Corner. Well, it's funny you should mention Tony Blair because we'll come to him in a minute. Um, so I've got two examples. One of them was from the 3rd of September last year, and this was uh, when Boris was Prime Minister had been Prime Minister for about 40 days. He'd suffered, well, or was in the process of suffering five vote defeats um, for putting things uh, you know, to the to the Parliament, including um, a, a revised deal that he's going to take to, Euro to Europe and um, also trying to prorogue the Parliament, all of that kind of stuff. He does about five different things which he loses, and this is one of the first, I think. So this is basically his deal um, that he's going to take to Europe 
to prevent the no deal is voted down in Parliament. And this is from uh, Newsnight. And the presenter is interviewing um, the Conservative cheap whip, Mark Harper, who is for Boris's deal. She's also interviewing Ken Clark, and who is the father of the house, He's, which is a honorific title bestowed on politicians that have been the longest serving um, in the House of Parliament. And uh, also the MP, Nicholas Soames, who is Winston Churchill's grandson. They are proper old school politicians, old school Tories, and they voted against the um, the deal and consequently things turn out bad for them. These two gents want to know through. whether they can still call themselves Conservatives, have the party whip, and whether Nicola Soames can stand well, in his own seat at your next well, election. Well, what I, what I would hope is that, obviously, they voted the way they have this evening. What I would hope is that tomorrow, when the bill is before the House, that they step back from that and they let the Prime Minister have the opportunity you think to try and come back with a deal. You think I'm going to vote against the bill tomorrow? Well, no, no, I'm just saying, yeah. I, I would This is a silly footnote issue. I'm not standing and, in the next place you know, anyway. I announced that a long time ago. I'm as amused as Michael Heseltine is by being told he's not a Conservative because he voted against the party in the House of Lords. This is all based on this absurd argument that Boris is trying to get a deal. He's obviously not trying to get a deal. I'm sure he'd prefer one if he thought he could get one past his right-wing supporters, but he's dug himself in. He, he's count, he assumes he's going to get no deal. He knows there's and no he majority. And because, because of the way people like you voted tonight? No, it's because he's no, he, 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 assumes, he assumes he gets no deal because he can't get the right wing of the Conservative Party many of them now stuck in his cabinet to agree to it. So that's that's Ken Clark. The voice first voice was Mark Harper and then we heard Emily Maitlis, the interviewee interviewer. Um, so Ken Clark is basically ends up uh, having the whip removed, which means he's not able to cast a vote for the government. So his representative um, his status as a representative of the Tory party is removed and so it is also from Nicholas Soames um, and these these two are proper old school Tories they were big beasts and Heseltine who gets mentioned were all big beasts in the Thatcher government in the 80s and that was the government that Boris admired growing up not that he's grown up but that was that they were the role models, but they've based you know they've they've out Thatchered Thatcher, so they were conservatives then, and they are now disagreeing with Boris insofar as it's a free vote. You can vote whichever way you like, but if you vote not for Boris's deal, then they have the whip removed on the basis that they're not. Conservatives, so Ken Clark says he's as amused as Michael Hesitine at being called not a conservative. So they're not the right kind of conservatives. And he goes on to say that the Tory party is now filled with right wingers. So whereas they used to be one nation uh, broad church Tories, uh, Philip Hammond, the, the then chancellor, described them as a right wing faction. So they're turning. They said they're turning my my Conservative Party into a right wing faction. Um, so in a way, Philip Hammond is saying they're not true Conservatives, just as Boris and the Whip are saying that Clark and Soames are not true Conservatives. And uh, in the clip, we'll post the link up to the whole thing. Um, Nicholas so Soames says our favourite catchphrase, such as like later on, he says. It's much more complicated than that, which is <laughs> which is great. When he said it, I went, hey! <laughs> so that was very good. Right, and then, okay, so the second example, being um, being mindful of being an impartial BBC journalist, we've got to show the other side. This is another interview following another lost vote. So this is Kirsty Walk on uh, Newsnight interviewing Tony Blair, uh, ex-leader of the Labour Party. Uh, so Tony Blair gets wheeled out every time Labour loses because he won three terms in office. 
in the 90s and early 2000s and Corbyn has just lost four in a very short space of time and so he's interviewed and uh, this is what Tony Blair says. And why I think this is so much worse than 1983. In 1983 you had a Labour leader Michael Foote who was never going to win an election but he was expelling the militant tendency he was actually pushing back on the Benite surge in the Labour Party. Neil Kinnock came in, he actually expelled the militant tendency. So, you know, but it's not, a question, it's not a question so much of expelling people, it's a question of taking the Labour Party back for what I would call sensible mainstream Labour politics. And that includes, by the way, a, a traditional left of the Labour Party. But that traditional left that stands in the, in the, in the shoes of Nye Bevan, Michael Foote, Neil Kinnock, John Prescott. That is a different left from these that's guys. That's old. That's gone. So, so he's saying um, there is room in the Labour Party to have a left-wing representative. So he's talking about momentum. So the, the, the contemporary version of militant tendency, which was being expelled as being too left-wing in the 80s by the then leader... Uh, Michael Foote and Neil Kinnock um, is the equivalent of that is called Momentum and they were the ones that were big backers of Corbyn and his you know not yeah, sensible mainstream hmm. if you're in Sweden his, politi his politics are <laughs> sensible and mainstream here because the the window has moved so far to the right those kind of sensible mainstream pol Swedish politics are now extreme left wing and uh, Blair is saying okay yes it is possible to have um, a left wing representative but it's got to be my left wing representative it's got to be the ones that I say because those these guys are not the, they're not the proper left wing we want good old fashioned left wingers the ones that we expelled last time although it's not about expelling people so he's and then quite right Kirsty Walk said, well, that's old. That's all gone. That's, you know, it's been 20 years since you were in power, mate. What gives you the right to blether on about this stuff? You know, and, and annoyingly, um, it did. The, the Labour Party, never ones to, you know, waste a good crisis, did do away with all the socialist um, principles that Corbyn espoused and gained a lot of popular following the the membership of the Labour Party went up about fourfold under Corbyn it's got it's got um, people subscribing to belong to the Labour Party it's the largest membership of any political party in Europe and the Labour Party spent no time in wasting that and hmm. have now moved back to the centre with Keir Starmer who continues the the centrist stuff led by um, Blair and then um, Ed Miliband and it's just, yeah for us staunch left wingers it's all a bit disappointing the whole blue labor project continues unabated and the problem is if the left wing isn't sufficiently different from the right wing why bother voting them in? That's that's yeah. The thing. I mean, but there is also the or the opposite argument where there, you know, it's it's more divided, for example, in the US than it than mm. it has been for a very long mm. time. The, the the left wing and the right wing are poles apart. Yeah. Um. And and they don't have a centre party. Yeah. And we kind of have a centre party but not one that anyone's going to vote for yeah so uh, yeah so i know that you're obviously a big fan of corbyn but you're not a fan of keir starmer is that right well not a fan of his politics his his are it's, it's more blue labor it's more um well, it's not. Whilst he will, he will, you know, on the the bingo card, you need to check every time he says opposition for opposition's sake. He's a great believer in compromise and um, supporting the government, particularly in the current crisis, which means actually he uh, excuses himself from holding the government to account 
you can be even Corbyn actually stood up in Parliament. And he's still a MP, so he stood up and and held the government to account. And said, okay, what's happening with PPE? What's happening with ventilators? Yeah, but Starmer was doing that even in his first PMQs. Yeah, he was he was yeah. um, coming. I mean, it, I think personally, I'm more of a centrist myself. Right, well, it's still left, but centre left. Yeah, but I'm. Um, yeah, I think it's nice to have a lawyer. Yeah, um, yeah. They're actually able to to argue. Yeah, uh, in a kind of a a real way, and and I think he so far. I have been quite impressed. He's ha- he has a history of, of kind of fighting for the little guy more. Yeah. He's not been a kind of big corporate lawyer so much as, as, a lot of experience with trying to help people who need help. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, the the problem with one of the problems with having someone as, um, as far to the left as Corbyn. Mm seemed to be that it's harder to get large numbers of people on board yeah so there's that, there's that uh, yeah when it comes when it comes to the ballot not, box yeah. certainly but absolutely yeah. it's nice to have those that those views espoused yeah. and, and made public for yeah. the first time in a long time it's great but um if you can't get people on board it's like sanders in the us yeah 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 it's it's great to have that movement of young people but if the young people aren't going to get out and vote there's nothing that you know it's not going to happen it's not going to change anything and so you've got you yeah that's all those there's always that worry about okay we've got to win the center ground because that's you know so we've got and that was what blair's success was he kind of rode the way the wave of the then leaders expelling the left wingers you know which and he kind of befriended so blair befriended the um media outlets and pretty much said well nothing's going to change so you don't need to be worried so we could you know we will be safe in parliament and Sure, they did do some things, um, many things which have been dismantled since by the Tory government. So, you know, they did a lot for the health service, a lot for education, a lot for supporting, um, you know, single mothers and, you know, uh, BAME businesses and all that kind of stuff, which has all been dismantled. But part of that seemed to be um knowingly compromising the position in order to get into power which you know which also happened with the uh, it's got a nasty leaves me with a nasty taste because that's exactly what Nick Clegg did with the liberals he compromised yeah. their position in order to get into power when he could have easily gone into coalition with the labor party but he decided yeah. not to purely because he he wanted to get into power um so yeah yeah i can i can see the argument for it because if you're even if you're not any more left wing than politics in sweden but <laughs> but the whole uh, window through which you're viewing it has shifted off to the right leaving you way off to the left that's a big leap for people to take and the the voting majority of you know the people in the bell curve of voting are people who sit in the center you know they've got yeah um you need to have that combination yeah. of the right kinds of policies and the popular kinds yeah. of policies yeah. Yeah. and there are enough people still who aren't quite on board with the more the more far on thankfully either end mm. of the spectrum yeah um that they are still fringes and i think moving towards that left is great Hmm. um and and but it has to be done in a way where you can actually get people to vote yeah and because the irony is that many of corbyn's policies about um the the, the funding the nhs nationalizing the transport system you know uh, providing uh, a welfare system whereby people will get a universal wage have been enacted in the COVID Absolutely. crisis by the current government. They've just had to. Makes me think of that scene in Die Hard where, you know, the 
the whole the all of the things that need to happen for the vault to open happen automatically as a result of a terrorist incident because the FBI shut the power down. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Essentially it. Yeah. Once there's an emergency, socialist policies suddenly make more sense. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> to everyone. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh yeah, well we do need the government to help us and pay for stuff yeah. and yeah. yeah. And yeah, ultimately <laughs> they're going, well we need to do that because otherwise there was there's nobody there would be nobody A to vote for us, B left the live to vote for us and, yeah. and uh, see inclined to vote for us if we don't do any of this you know and and yet in the u.s very little of that is actually <laughs> happening and yet will they still vote trump in well we'll see yeah i mean <laughs> even if I've they're stopped, holding held I've stopped trying to predict. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's a fantasy, it's a fantasy, in the wild, across the sea, from the premise to the conclusion, we can spot. One true Scotsman there, Rod Stewart, <laughs> with sailing. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to figure out the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The gravelly voice <laughs> septuagenarian himself. <laughs> yeah. Who I do have, have actually the dubious, um, I, I'm going to say pleasure, honour, dubious fact that I saw him play live at, um, at the Isle of Wight Festival some couple of years ago. And... Uh, he what he kept disappearing. He would do a song, and then the <laughs> band would do another song or another two songs. His backing singers would do it, and we and then he'd come back on with a new outfit. And you think so either he's shagging one of the backing singers, or <laughs> or he's just exhausted. So he would go off and why not both? Yeah, well exactly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I think he was kind of keeping up his his um, uh, reputation as a bit of somewhat of a roué, and. Um, yeah, but it was filled with Scot Scots nationalism, and the black projections were filled with tartan and Scots flags <laughs> and shortcake. football shortcake <laughs> haggis bagpipers. There was a whole bloody bagpipe section in sailing. He did skate. That was the last oh, God, the last really? number, obviously, and the, the the massed band of bagpipes kind of marched on stage and played. So not, not only did we have to suffer from sailing and <laughs> everybody in the audience holding up the phone app of a lighter, but then <laughs> bagpipes. Uh, and, oh, my God. It was, yeah, it's not, not pleasant. But uh, <laughs> there, we go. there we go. It was the last act of the last day. So you had, you had to go because that's when the fireworks went off. So... <laughs> 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 oh. okay well in the fallacy in the world we like to talk about the fallacy of the week from a non-political perspective and this week our first example is from the simpsons yeah. and this is an episode which ended just kind of randomly <laughs> with a a short cartoon about ned flanders and it had a theme tune Hens love roosters, not me. Everyone who counts loves Ned Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who counts. <laughs> that's ultimately the. That's the, that's all of the one true Scotsman. That's what they mean. Everyone yeah. who counts. Yeah. Republicans who yeah. count. It's like the Scotsman no true count. everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No true <laughs> everyone. Who, yeah. Left wingers who count. Yeah. Conservatives who count. That's yeah. That's it. That's, pr that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our second example represents uh, quite a wide swathe of examples of this fallacy because an occasional other name for it is no true Christian. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because basically any time anyone who is a Christian does something that other Christians don't like, yeah. they claim that that person isn't a real Christian. Right. Um, yeah. And it can be 
like the entire Catholic Church, for example, if you're a Protestant, <laughs> yeah. and 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 then you say, yeah, Catholics aren't real Christians. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. this one comes from Bill O'Reilly, and it's after Anders Breivik, the Norwegian oh, yeah. terrorist, um, killed lots of people. Now, on Sunday, the New York Times headlined, has horrors emerged? Norway charges Christian extremist. A number of other news organizations like the LA Times and Reuters also played up the Christian angle. But Breivik is not a Christian. That's impossible. No one believing in Jesus commits mass murder. The man might have called himself a Christian on the net, but he is certainly not of that faith. Mm, so, yeah, no yeah, one who believes in this... Jesus <laughs> will commit mass murder. Okay, apart from the Crusaders. Yeah. Apart from the Crusades, yeah. yeah. Um, and and in fact, Brevik in his fifteen hundred page manifesto mm -hmm. referred to the Crusades multiple times mm -hmm. and, and referenced. Uh, he he said he was part of a modern Knights Templar. Oh right, it's so singular. Uh, yeah. Trying <laughs> yeah. to eradicate Muslims from Europe and 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 usher in a, a properly white Christian Europe. He was uh, by by shooting Norwegians. Yeah. Yeah. Christian well, yes. Norwegians. It's it's yeah. arguable how much you can say that he was doing it from a Christian perspective mm. or doing it in the name of Jesus or anything like that. But he definitely referenced Christianity mm. many times in his manifesto. He said he considered himself to be 100% Christian. Yes, he criticised the Protestant church and the Catholic church uh, in, in the manifesto, but but he definitely was was referencing it as a religious motivation um but that's not really even that important to to what bill o'reilly mm. said because what he said was he isn't a christian because a christian wouldn't do this yeah and essentially that's that's the fallacy in yeah, a nutshell yeah, yeah, really yeah. yeah is is it is your def you're creating this definition of a group of Christians as some as people who wouldn't commit this kind of crime and then saying well this person who says he's a Christian and committed this kind of crime isn't a Christian yeah. because I know that no Christian would do it yeah yeah no yeah. true Christian yeah so rather so, than adjusting your definition of what a Christian is you just exclude him you say yeah. all the Christians that count absolutely and therefore your 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 definition holds up yeah yeah, and it's yeah. proved, and it is really the very kind of circular reasoning, begging the question form of this. But it, it's interesting because it's also the he kind of balks at saying Christian extremist, but there's that that uh, phrase Muslim fundament fundamentalist, you know, Muslim extremist, and there Absolutely. there is a you know a legitimate um, argument made by the Muslim community saying they don't represent the Muslim faith. They're not true Muslims, and that... well, yeah, the Muslim absolutely the Muslims do it as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it is it is the same argument. Yeah, and and the the thing is that the people who who do this stuff, whether they are Muslim or Christian, they tend to use arguments from the Bible mm. or from the Quran mm. to to justify what they're doing. Yeah. And it's like the Westboro Baptist Church, for example. You know, a lot of Christians say, well, they're not true Christians. They're saying, you know, they're talking about hate and saying God hates fags and saying God kills people because, you know, America is okay with gay people mm -hmm. and and therefore they're not really Christian. They're, they are absolutely Christian in as much as they believe in Jesus. They believe that they're Christian. They justify what they say by pointing to passages yeah. from the Bible. Yeah. The fact that those passages are from the Old Testament and some Christians don't kind of pay as much attention to the Old Testament or at least some parts of the Old Testament as the New Testament and use the New Testament to justify ignoring parts of the Old Testament while still saying the Ten Commandments are important yeah. and all kinds of yeah. weird gymnastics that they do... Yeah doesn't mean that the Westboro Baptist Church choosing those specific passages and saying this means we should protest funerals and, and, and you know, promote hate speech isn't Christian. Mm. It is absolutely defended by multiple passages in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the, you know, Islam does it as well. 
And in fact, the Public Religion Research Institute did a study in 2017 looking at people's attitude to religiously motivated violence. And they found a bit of a double standard mm -hmm. in terms of whether people, when a, a violent act is carried out by someone professing to do it in the name of their religion, yep. whether those people are actually members of that religion or, or whether they represent that religion. Uh, they looked at Christian and, and Muslims and um, the, the most stark group was the white evangelicals in the US mm -hmm. who said that when a person commits a violent act and says it's in the name of Christianity, they say they're doing it for Jesus, basically. Yeah. 87% of them said that person isn't a real Christian. Right, yeah. But 44% of them said the person isn't a real Muslim if they say they're doing it for for right. Islam, for Allah. If they, you know, yell at yeah, her yeah, yeah. while they're doing it, they're then apparently like over 50% say, yeah, that's a real Muslim. <laughs> wow. But only 13% say, yeah, that's a real Christian if the person does it in the name of Jesus. Wow. So... There you, go. there you go. Cognitive bias yeah. going on kind of there too, isn't it? So if you, if uh, Yeah, essentially the exact same thing is happening. Yeah. But because it's part of your group, you say, well, yeah, that's they don't represent us. Yeah. Well, oh, that's fascinating, isn't it? So we're going we're gonna to play fake news, folks. I love the game. It's a great game. I understand the game as well as anybody. As well as anybody. So I... I it's time for fake news, mm -hmm. the game where I read out three Trump quotes, two of which are real and one I made up. But this this time, I'm basically, I'm not even getting marked. Well, you can guess. You can say which, which one you think it is. Okay. But the these quotes uh, have been so around the internet, around the news, around the world, because they're insane in a, in a totally kind of revolutionary way um, <laughs> that, that Taking, I couldn't not use yeah, them. Take... I couldn't, like, ignore them. <laughs> But you've heard them, yeah. So you're gonna know which one is not real. Yeah. So I'm, this is a gimme. Um, but right, okay. but essentially, we'll still go through the process. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. This is just so, worth lis listening oh, to God. it. Read out <laughs> cold. That's yeah. That's the so thing. these are these are statements from Trump's daily propaganda um, rallies, <laughs> and uh, yeah. he he said um, just a few days ago. Yeah. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but we're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, which you can do, either through the skin or in some other way. And I think you said, you're going to test that too? Sounds interesting. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number on the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So you're going to have to use medical doctors. As opposed to which doctors? <laughs> yeah. Which, which big, that... <laughs> it belongs to the realm of witch doctory, doesn't uh -huh. it? That kind of to what's doing the number on the lungs is that the disinfectant or the COVID? Well, it would. It would do a. It would. A, it would a, certainly lungs, do a number yeah. on the lungs. Yeah, because that's why it says on the bottles of disinfectant: do not drink, do not ingest. Uh -huh. You know, to be used externally only. <laughs> you know, don't get it. So in your before eyes. you decide whether that's true or not. Yeah. Um, statement number two, yeah. antibiotics used to solve every problem. Now one of the biggest problems the world has is the germ has gotten so brilliant that the antibiotics can't keep up with it. And they're constantly trying to come up with a new... People go to hospital and they catch... They go for a heart operation. That's no problem. But they end up dying from from problems. You know the problems I'm talking about. There's a whole genius to it. We're fighting. Right. Not only is it hidden, but it's very smart, okay? It's invisible and it's hidden, but it's... It's very smart. Okay, right, and because uh, okay. he does know that antibiotics don't <laughs> don't have any effect on viruses. He, of course, he doesn't know that. No, no. Um, and number three, yeah, the authority that I have as president is the authority I have, which is very powerful. <laughs> I call the shots. I've done a job the likes of which nobody's ever done. The mobilisation, the things, all of the things we've done, nobody's ever done a job like this. 
It's very sad when people write fake stories like the New York Times, who frankly, if there was any justice, would be out of business. And they will be out of business at some point, probably relatively soon if they don't start telling the truth. It is brilliant. That does fit right in. <laughs> it's oh, so good. Very good. It's just perfect because it, it's that he, he, kind of, he thinks of something and then he hears it and he goes, oh, oh, that's good. And then goes on, then augments that and as if he's just heard it. <laughs> Somebody said it. Oh, it's me. Yeah, and then it's just kind of gone over. That's a really good thing that you just said. Yeah, I know. And I've said I, th- I say things like that. People say I say things, and that no, it's just that that. Well, yeah. Well, obviously, number three is the one you made up, but, but, <laughs> but number two is it's like a drunk. Have you, have you ever bumped into a drunk <laughs> in a bar, and they just and you can't get away from them, and he's uh-huh. and he's going yeah. Antibiotics. Let me tell you about antibiotics. He can't, and it just loses his track, his train of thought, because he's drunk, and they're constantly trying to come yeah. up with a new. Yeah, people go to hospital, and then they end up dying from problems. Problem. You, you know the <laughs> problems I'm talking about. It's, it's, just, it's just a genius. It's his genius. It's hidden, but it's very smart. Okay, it's visible, it's hidden, but it's very smart. And you just kind of, you can't get away from the guy. And that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, number number two is, as you say, is, is real. Yeah, let's hear him say it. Antibiotics used to solve every problem. Now one of the biggest problems the world has is the germ has gotten so brilliant that the antibiotic can't keep up with it. And they're constantly trying to come up with a new. People go to a hospital and they catch... They go for a heart operation. That's no problem, but they end up dying from, from problems. You know the problems I'm talking about. Uh, there's a whole genius to it. We're fighting. Not only is it hidden, but it's very smart. Okay, it's invisible, and it's hidden, but it's it's very smart. He's added nothing to the wealth of human knowledge. Nothing at all. At all. No. 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 In fact, everyone listening is stupid for having yeah. listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just, uh, nothing, nothing. Like he kind of, he, yeah. Oh God, damn it! It's who's he saying that to? Is this? It's a press conference. It's the press conferences that he's doing. Oh, it's not. It's it's, that, this is to the media, okay. like knowing it's being recorded and it's <laughs> it's like going out live. This is going out live on multiple channels. <laughs> And people are tuning in because he's the president. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh. terrifying, isn't it? It's it's <laughs> literally soul destroying. You you can feel your soul <laughs> withering up and dying. But the most amazing thing is mm. that isn't the stupidest thing in this section, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even that the that sent that paragraph. Yeah. Is not, not the stupidest, stupidest thing, thing he said this week. Right. The stupidest thing is number one. When we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right, and then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs, and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that, so that you're going to have to use medical doctors. <laughs> it's just- just when he goes, and I think you said that hasn't been checked. No, yeah, because it's of course bonkers. It hasn't fucking been checked. Yeah, because it just it is bonkers. Oh god, it is. And then I said, amazing. Who, who, is he reporting something? You know. Yeah, yeah. He's talking a, about a, a he's talking about a, a briefing doctors. that he had yeah. basically, where they told him yeah. that it's uh, they they have checked um, how the virus survives on hard surfaces. Right. Yeah. And and the things that kill the virus on hard surfaces, you know, it, it, it has a half-life. It survives for an amount of time yeah. um, just without being touched. But if it's in the sun, if it's out 
like in sunlight, yeah. it the the half life goes down a lot. Yeah. It dies, yeah. and you know it can't cope with UV light yeah. on a hard surface. Yeah, and and also disinfectant. If you spray disinfectant on the hard surface, that gets rid of it. Yeah, as it does with most germs yeah. and and things like that. That's why we have a bleach in the UK that says it kills 99% of all germs. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's what they do. That's what they're for. Yeah. But he has taken that and gone, well, you know, that works on a on a counter. Yeah. So why can't we just put that inside us? Yeah. Because that's the level of his understanding of science. Yeah. <laughs> so that that thing that you use to wipe down your kitchen surface can't we just put that inside a body yeah yeah <laughs> and then uh, yeah and he literally said that when I mean, you yeah. heard him say yeah. just then yeah. he literally said we have this disinfectant it it knocks them out he's not talking about any clever medical disinfectant any no. o3 or, or, or using it as a or, yeah Using it as a kind of metaphor, or, it's you know. No, it's, it he is saying he's infection. he's talking specifically about disinfectant. disinfectant that people use to spray on surfaces, and then saying, "How about we inject that? Yeah. We could try that." Well, just what about that? that? Wouldn't that work? Yeah. And the level to which his supporters and followers have been saying, "No, that's not what he said. It's not what he meant." He's the Kaylee McEnany said um, that he was uh, quoted out of context. No, no, you just heard the, the context, entire context yeah. there. That yeah. was what he said. Yeah. Um, and then the next day he said he was being sarcastic. He said he said he was first of all he, he claimed he was phrasing it as a question, which was our last episode. Because yeah, he said yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, he wasn't saying you should do it. He was saying, Is there a way Is we there can a do way this? we can do that? Is there a way we could <laughs> just we asking could questions? Pour poison into our body. Could that do it? <laughs> yeah. There is a way, um, yes. But yeah, but he also claimed he was asking it in a very sarcastic way to the hostile fake news media, okay. which he absolutely wasn't no, doing. He was talk- saying he, it to the he, bemused medical expert. Yeah, and he was also talking telling, directly to Deborah Burke and telling saying, her you'll have to use medical do doctors yeah. as opposed to ordinary doctors. You've got to, you know, or doctors of philosophy. You've got to use medical doctors that would that would kind of just stare blankly at you. I go, what did you just say? We've got to put light in there, like through the skin, or and then he realizes what he said. You've got what we're gonna do yeah. what we're we gonna or do, shove a flashlight or... up your ass? Yeah. <laughs> what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get that in there? Yeah, you know those powerful ones you see advertised on the internet that can fry an egg. What are we gonna do? Shove that up your ass? And yeah, that'll kill it. Yeah, like that that'll cure it, like it cured Richard II. So it isn't, not yeah. only does he not know anything about medicine, he doesn't know anything about sarcasm. Because, <laughs> yeah, which is the lowest form of wit. And you would think he would be able to, he can't even rise to that. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to be sarcastic. He kind of did what? It, it, and it's not framed as a question. He says, I think you said you're going to test that too. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you might think that. Because it serves your purposes, but no way would I, as a medically trained doctor, as a, a certificated medical person, would I have ever advocated injecting disinfectant into people. And and that was the moment that he broke Deborah Burks. Yeah. He he broke Fauci weeks yeah. ago. But but Deborah Burks has been defending him and saying how amazingly up on the science he of all this he is yeah and and all of that stuff and and there's clips from another camera angle yeah looking at her while he's talking right on on loads of them on twitter uh, of her she's just kind of like trying to sink into her seat yeah. and <laughs> she did hoping to Fauci die did that while kind he's of, talking that thing where he's, <laughs> you know he did a slapped his you know the forehead face palm yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. but uh, no no. Oh, my God. And, then of course, he'll say, well, she's not a true doctor. <laughs> you know, other doctors, well, she disagreed, but that's because yeah. she's not a real doctor. You know, she's not a medical doctor. She's a doctor of psychology. So, or she's a doctor in name only. She's a dino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a drino, yeah. So, Jesus. I mean, we are... 
Um, we're three days since this happened, yeah. and and so far there have been at least two. I mean, apart from all of the the kind of MAGA people yeah. on Twitter claiming ridiculous things about what he meant by disinfectant when he's talking about it, right? Like actual medicine, right? Um, but. Um, apart from all them, the official White House story is that there's been he's quoted out of context, and um, and it was all sarcastic. Yeah. Um, no doubt there will be more random claims yeah, over the next yeah. few days. Um, Charlie Kirk is still claiming the um, out of context thing. He hasn't got the memo about the sarcasm. Oh, okay, yet. yeah, he's not moved so, on. Right, yeah, yeah. No, um, but has anybody is... actually injected themselves with disinfectant? Oh, yeah, yeah. no. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the in the uh, I think eighteen hours since uh, after that yeah. happened, thirty New Yorkers uh, oh. were were admitted into hospital having ingested um, oh. uh, disinfectants, oh. which it's is a way of killing yourself. From, from one report I read, only an increase of seventeen. <laughs> so so like on a standard oh, day, okay. yeah, you get you get roughly half that. Yeah, bit. yeah, you get the crazies um, trying to kill themselves by drinking <laughs> just doing it. Yeah. You know, yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. on a, on an average day. Yeah. But but just in New York alone, and uh, kind of essentially double the number of people, at least usually, um, who do it were were ingesting cleaning products. No. Um, on the say so of the president. So yeah. and and undoubtedly there'll be people who've tried to shove UV bulbs in places they shouldn't go, yeah. um, where literally the sun doesn't. Yes, shine. exactly. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> for uh, good reason. That'll, yeah. Yeah. Come out with all kinds of bad stuff happening. So, and it's just what is what is the planet come to when oh, there are people, paid professional people, paid by the taxpayers' money, paid by you, the taxpayers, your money is paying for these people to defend the president for uh -huh. saying this shit. Also, the number of people who have who have felt it necessary. Yeah. To to go online or on TV and say, please don't inject yourself yeah. with disinfectant, yeah. the, just because it is necessary. Yeah, because that it's yeah, yeah. you know they're not over overblowing it. Yeah, it, 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 that is something that people need now to be told. Yeah. Yes, it's time for the part of the episode that this week at least is called Antibody Tests Are Not a Logical Fallacy because uh, everyone's talking about opening up parts of the country again, parts of the world mm -hmm. again, really. Mm -hmm. And part of what some people are trying to base it on is antibody tests, which is a test that you can take which will tell you whether you've already had the coronavirus and therefore, obviously... Right whether you're safe to go back to work and go back into society and, and you know, go around non-social distancing and stuff like that. Yep. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we thought we'd talk about this. The, the, the first antibody tests appeared around the beginning of April and now there's about... There's, a, there's more than 100 different tests which will tell you whether you've had coronavirus... Only seven so far are approved by the FDA. Wow, yeah. And those are approved under the kind of accelerated practice of they, you know, they haven't been fully tested, and right. but but they they are essentially a kind of a blood finger prick test. So okay. they're safe, but the question is how accurate they are. Yeah, and so whether they are of, as so accurate. So people who participate in that are all are also part of the beta test. In a way that they ultimately kind of... yes yeah yeah and the thing about this is that these tests are going to be useful statistically mm. but they're not really very useful on an individual basis right. they're not they're not they're not really that useful to tell you whether you have had it and whether you are immune and whether you're safe mm. to mm. to not socially distance and all that stuff and there's yeah. a number of reasons for that so first of all there's a difference between quantitative tests and qualitative tests. Quantitative mm -hmm. tests measure antibodies in your blood and yeah. see how many antibodies you have and how they how your strong your response is to um, to the coronavirus. But that's not what 
most people are selling. That's not what is because that that kind of thing needs to be sent away to a lab. It's not yeah, the, yeah. the kind yeah. of quick test. The quick tests are qualitative tests, and they give you a yes or no of whether there are any coronavirus antibodies in your blood, mm-hmm. at least theoretically. So that's not going to tell you whether you're immune or whether you've no longer got it or whether well that's the thing first of all it doesn't test whether you have it it doesn't test whether you currently have coronavirus because antibodies take a while to develop um it can they can take days or even weeks to develop so what what it would theoretically at least tell you is that you you did have it and you maybe don't have it now um right maybe maybe being the caveat yeah. yeah, and we'll get back to that in a in mm-hmm. a moment. But but even if we had quantitative tests being de- being kind of produced and 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 used regularly, mm. that still wouldn't really tell you whether you were immune, because immunity yeah. needs a certain amount of antibodies in your blood. And even if we could test how many antibodies you have, what kind of what the number would be. At the moment, we don't have reference ranges for yep. coronavirus. A reference yep. range is something which is, which needs to be built up over years. For example, with measles, we have a number where if they if they give you a quantitative test for for measles immunity, um, they can tell how how many antibodies you have, and then look up that number against the reference mm. range. And there's a number above which you're immune. There's yep. a number above which you might be immune or you might yeah. need a kind of a, a booster shot yeah. and there's a number below which you're definitely not immune and you yeah. are likely to get measles if so you come into contact at the moment with it. we don't you can have as you know you could have millions and millions and we we nobody knows yet we don't know how what many that means. you need yeah yeah at the moment we yeah. don't know what the number is that means you're immune we don't know what the number is that means you're at risk of still getting it you might have a, have had a mild case you might have had a mild reaction um, we also don't know how long that immunity lasts, even if you are immune, hmm. because in with some viruses, if you have it and you get the um, the antibodies, then you're pretty much immune for life. With some, it doesn't last that long, and yeah, yeah. obviously, there's there's um, as with the seasonal flu, there's mutations that mean that you may have been immune having had the vaccine to to last year's, but you're not immune to this season's flu. Yep. So. What we don't know is if there's a second spike, for example, in in the fall, whether you will still, even if there is no mutation, whether you'll still be immune to that having had yeah. coronavirus in January or February, whatever. It's yeah. we don't have enough data at the moment to for for these kinds of tests, which just tell you yes or no, to actually be useful to you. The other thing is, the tests that just tell you yes or no. We don't even know whether that is accurate because, the first of all, because there's so many tests out there that are just produced kind of by by labs, some in other countries, some in the US, that, that haven't been looked at by the FDA. Um, yeah. We don't know how accurate they are. We don't know, even if the, uh, the people who are producing the tests say this is 95% accurate, we don't know if that's true. Yeah. Um yeah. the ones that have been looked at by the FDA, even the the good ones still might only be 98 95% accurate. They might be uh they have different levels for false positives and for sensitivity. Sensitivity basically means that it's bas- it's for false negatives. So if you if you have got it, um there will still be a certain number of people who test negative. Um yeah. and and that probably will be quite small and that's not that big a deal. If you've had it and you test negative, then all it means is you don't think that you're immune. You don't you don't think yeah, that yeah, you yeah. have yeah. um you know, some level of increased ability to, to go out places. The the worst thing is false positives, where people who haven't had it take the test and find and and come back with a positive and think that they're fine. Yeah. Think that they're okay so to, they've had to it, so they can go, go out. Yeah. yeah. And the difficulty with that is is that although the good tests might be 95% accurate, and that sounds really good, when the proportion of the population that has had a disease is quite small, that really has a huge effect on how reliable that test is 
in terms of telling you whether you've actually had it or not. So, for example, with 95% accuracy, that means that of out of 100 people, 5% of people are going to get a false positive. 5% of mm -hmm. people are going to have, have something saying they've had it and, and uh, they haven't had it. Yeah. If you think about a population of 1,000 people with and, and 50 people in that population have actually had the disease and recovered from it, which is probably not that far from the real situation in some areas. Some areas yeah. like New York, it might be higher. Some areas in rural areas, it might be lower. But but a 5% of the population having had it isn't way off the charts. Mm -hmm. um, so in a, a population of 1,000 people, 50 people have had it. If you've got a test which is 98% sensitive, so it's only 2% false negatives, Yeah, those... Of those 50 people who've had it, 49 of them will test positive. That's right. great. They'll know. Yeah. But of the 950 people who haven't had it, 5% of those will also test positive. And that is yeah. 47 people-ish. Yeah. So total of that 1,000 people population, you'll get 96 positive tests, only 49 of whom actually have had the disease. Wow. So that's yeah. roughly yeah. fifty percent. It's slightly over fifty percent accuracy. Because yeah. if you've if you've had the test and you've tested positive, there's pretty much one in two chance that that's right. And the problem with that is if that if those people then go out thinking that they are they have had it, given the R rate of this of coronavirus, is it, it's going to start all over again? Exactly. Because and that, that's the know, problem. The that's why these, that's or why these tests, uh, yeah. even quite accurate ones, aren't useful for, for mm. an individual. You know, we don't know at what level of antibodies means immunity. No. So if you are wandering around under the misapprehension that you've had it already and you get it again, that's going to skew the results of whether... It's something you can catch twice because you think you have had it already and then you get it again and you report that you've already had it. So the the working hypothesis that you can only get this once is going to be a shaky hypothesis at the very yep. least, which is why the tests need to be tested. So Absolutely. The, and the tests the test need to be tested, but they also need to be used for what they're being what they're supposed to be used for, mm. which is to increase our understanding of the spread of the disease yeah. rather than to give people false kind of confidence yeah. that it's okay yeah. for them personally to go back to work. Well, um, it's the, whole, the whole thing during the Ebola outbreak was the, the main thing that, apart from getting people to wash their hands and, you know, avoid contact with, um, you know, avoid washing the dead and things like that, um, was to track and trace. So they needed to test everybody and then um, list the fact that they tested them. And if you tested positive, then they would trace who you'd come into contact with and alert them and then be able to um, do a kind of preemptive strike and go and educate that community or uh, isolate that community or be prepared to treat that community or help them to plan and those kind of things. And that's, yeah. the, that's what the Chinese government were doing with the, their amazing kind of digital lockdown and digital, some would say in Oklahoma, probably surveillance, whereby they would... If as you left your apartment building, you would have your temperature measured and that kind of thing. And if and or as you came home, they would do that. And if your temperature had gone up, that would be an indicator that you probably got it. Therefore, they would be able to trace where you've been, what you've bought by tracking your purchase. Yeah, and, and South Korea were doing kind of a similar thing mm. with, with mm. the um, actual the the tests, not the antibody yep. tests, but um, the contact tracing that, yeah. yes, some people would definitely have a problem with in terms of civil rights and civil yeah. liberties. Um, but 
helped them to to really flatten the curve in South exactly. Korea. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that and that's kind of what the test needs to be about is gathering data and deciding, you know, where what are the factors that are controlling the spread or or not controlling the spread and so on and so forth. They're not to. It's not. Imagine if these were pregnancy tests. Mm. And there were a hundred different kind of pregnancy tests that said, oh, yeah, it's all been tested. You'd kind of want to make sure, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want a false negative um, yeah. only to, you know, three months later to find that actually, well, why am I, why is this happening? <laughs> you know, that you, and they're you, being used as well, these antibody tests, to, to um, again, unfortunately, promote misinformation in some areas. Mm. That there, there was... Um, uh, a study in California that that used the earliest tests to claim that um, an area, Santa Clara, I think, or somewhere like that, um, an area was had had about five percent um, infection rate, which mm -hmm. was about eighty times what the other tests had showed, what they originally mm. thought, yep. and that was used to suggest that. Um, actually, the mortality rate is way lower than we think it is. Is is because so many more people uh, have yeah. had it and recovered. Yeah, yeah. Um, than we thought, and we know how many people have died. Therefore, it's actually way safer than we thought it was, and mm. it's completely irresponsible mm. because the tests mm. that they used, um, as as I mentioned, for a population where where five percent of people genuinely have had it those positive tests are only about 50 percent accurate if yep. the population is lower than that and and according to the the their estimates prior to this it's way lower than that it's like 80 percent mm. lower than that um 80 times lower rather they that false positive completely obliterates the the kind of signal to noise ratio of that mm. test mm. you're you're getting uh, you can't rely on the numbers that you're getting from that because you don't know how many of them are genuine and how many of them are false positives, mm. uh, especially given the unknown accuracy of some of the tests that they were using in the earlier days. So so trying then to promote some kind of wider bit of information about, for example, the mortality of the disease on something like that is yeah. completely irresponsible. Um, yeah. Not to mention the fact that they, the the people that they tested, were kind of self-selected and therefore more likely people who thought they'd had it. Because if you're going to get an antibody test, because you because you want to know whether you've had the disease, a number of a larger number of those people who are going to make that decision and get that test are going to be people who want to know because they think they have had it. Yeah. 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 So it, it strikes me as it's a bit, it's got the flavour of woo about it, this this um, industry that sprung up to produce these tests. You've got to kind of be a little bit sceptical that they're cashing in on um, a, a need. There's a psychological need to have this stuff, which is, and it's 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 almost alternative medicine. Yeah. In the, yeah, yeah. They're people, just saying, "Oh, yeah, take people this, are clamouring to cured. find out if yeah. they are safe, if they've had it." Mm. And that is not what this tells you at the moment. No. And and as the uh, overall infection rates increase, which unfortunately they inevitably will, the that problem with the false positives positives comes down as a proportion of the uh, uh, of the number of people. If, for example, fifty percent of the population have um, have actually had the disease, then that extra 5%, which is getting a false positive, um, mm. doesn't affect the accuracy as much. It does. It, it makes, actually, if you have a, a positive test, then it's much more likely that you have had it than mm. you've got a false positive. At the moment, with the relatively low in most areas infection rate, um, it it's just not something you can rely on. And finally, some things we really don't have time to talk about. In one of Trump's daily propaganda shout fests last week, he randomly decided to claim that he had total authority to tell governors when to lift stay-at-home orders. Several reporters immediately told him, lol, no you don't. And then the next day, he said he was giving governors permission to make their own decisions about it, which is not how any of this works. 
A few of the stupider governors thought that opening up now would get them in Trump's good books. So Ron DeSantis reopened Florida's beaches and classified pro wrestling as an essential industry, while Georgia's Brian Kemp announced the opening of hair salons, tattoo parlours, gyms and bowling alleys. Dr Burks struggled to explain how hairdressers and tattoo artists would be able to do their jobs while remaining socially distant, and Trump threw Kemp under the bus, saying he disagreed strongly with Kemp's decision, despite reports that he'd called Kemp to praise him for the decision just the day before. Way back in the heady time of Brexit, British Transport Minister, ex-Transport Minister Chris Grayling, did a deal totalling £50 million to make and then break a contract with a company to run ferries to ease the congestion at Dover in the case of a no-deal Brexit, a company which had no ships, had never run a ferry service or ever moved a single truck in its entire history. Why would you do that? Spoiler alert, follow the money. In a strange echo, Trump's administration has awarded a $55 million contract to make N95 masks to a company that's never made anything like that. Is no longer listed as a limited company in its native Virginia, filed for bankruptcy protection, oh, and has no employees. Hasn't had since May 2018. Not shady mafia-sounding executive for Pantera, James V. Punelli told the Washington Post that the company was working with military contacts to obtain the masks at a cost to FEMA of $5.50 a pop. Weirdly, a lot more than the 63 cents a piece they're paying companies like 3M who already make the fucking things. Military contacts. Hmm. Follow the money. Trump is struggling with whistleblowers again, but at least this time he knows the whistleblower's name. <laughs> Dr. Rick Bright was the director of the Biomedical Advance Research and Development Authority, the agency working on developing a coronavirus vaccine, until he questioned Trump's repeated hydroxychloroquine adverts, at which point he was moved mm -hmm. to a less important and less impactful role at the National Institute for Health. Bright claims he was ousted because of his insistence on spending time and money on stuff with some scientific basis. Trump has continued to talk up hydroxychloroquine, although less frequently, now that the FDA are advising against its use and a VA study showed no benefit. And he's now got disinfectant as a, as a yeah. new he's found an alternative child. miracle yeah. cure. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> this week's throwing as many people as possible under the bus in one go award goes to Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman, who offered the entire city as a control group to see what happens when you come out of lockdown. OK, we all know the town has a link with lab-associated rodents, the rat pack and all, but turning the whole place into guinea pigs, come on, without asking? And then what about the unfortunates coming into the city to do the actual working because no one normally actually lives there, right? Well, exactly. Trying to hide her disappointment, Mayor Goodman says the only reason they couldn't do it is because the statisticians, damn those boffins, said it wouldn't be a true control. The placebo, if you will, which she would love to be, because those pesky migrant workers would come in and ruin it. You'll not be surprised to hear that despite her call to open Vegas's bars, casinos, hotels for business, she offers no plan on how to do it safely. That's their job, not the mayor's job. Hmm, sounds like the mayor's job won't be yours come next election, Carolyn. On one of the days last week when he disagreed with governors deciding for themselves whether it was safe to open, Trump decided to rail against those evil democratic governors evilly stopping people from going out just because of the deadly virus, tweeting things like LIBERATE MINNESOTA in all caps like a lunatic, in support of the lunatics who took to the streets to protest the stay-at-home orders, calling their state governments fascists for evilly trying to save lives and carrying signs with slogans like GIVE ME LIBERTY OR GIVE ME DEATH without having the sense to realise they could have both or neither. Meanwhile, Stephen Moore, a Trump adviser and economist who lost out on a seat on the Federal Reserve Board because he's an economically illiterate racist transphobe, decided wrongly that people haven't heard enough from him and likened the protesters, a group made up almost entirely of angry white people, to Rosa fucking Parks. If any of them knew who that was, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't even appreciate the comparison. <laughs> there you go. A weird Moebius folding in on itself type loop is happening in Washington. The big building with Trump in it is neighbours with another big building with Trump on it and nobody in it. 
The Trump International Hotel is owned by Trump and leased for $3 million a year to be paid monthly to the General Services Administration under a 60-year deal. And the Trump Organization is appealing to the Trump administration for a reduction in the rent because times is hard. Just treat us the same, why, Derek? But the Trump Organization was barred by Congress from seeking relief from the Treasury's $500 billion rescue fund. And the company has decided not to apply for a federal loan through the Small Business Administration. In an all-too-familiar story of impending or actual bankruptcy, Trump himself owes Deutsche Bank more than $300 million in loans connected to the Washington Hotel and various other properties, and this time he can't do an unseen backhander. It couldn't be happening to a nicer guy. Fresh from TV appearances where he claimed the $1,200 stimulus checks should see Americans through a 10-week lockdown. It's just a couple of mortgage payments, Michael. What could it cost? $10? Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin claimed that it was his idea to print Trump's signature on the checks. Sure, Trump puts his name on buildings, planes, steaks, bottled water, board games, wine, chocolate, golf courses, vodka, casinos, hats, playing cards, footballs, glasses, bath bombs, hoodies, sharpies, cologne, and I swear to God I'm not making this up bow ties for dogs, but it was Fat John Oliver's idea to print Trump's name on the checks. Yeah, and that's why they got held up in being issued. Uh In Britain, our health minister, the 12-year-old Matt Hancock, continues to try to convince everyone that masks, gowns and gloves really, really are coming in vast quantities when they're not, and those quantities that are shipped would last about a day that ventilators will be available in large numbers whilst companies who can make them are not being asked to, and that testing will be carried out at the rate of 100,000 per day by May. They won't. And he succeeds in fooling no one, except perhaps Boris, convalescing in the countryside, who is proud of his protégé for continuing to spout empty words that sound great and mean nothing in true Brexit style, so that when it all goes to shit, Next week, Boris can make him the full guy. Of course, Boris is recovered now and is thus totally immune, not from further bouts of coronavirus, but from any further criticism. He's the people's champion after all. He beat it for us. God help us all. So that's all the bad arguments and faulty reasoning we have time for this episode. You can find the show notes at fallaciousTrump.com and if you hear Trump say something stupid and want to ask if it's a fallacy, our contact details are on the contact page. If you think we've used a fallacy ourselves, let us know. And if you've had a good time, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can support the show at patreon.com slash ftrump, just like our newest patron, Keith Bowman. Thanks, Keith. You can connect with us and other listeners in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash fallacious trump. All music is by the outbursts and was used with permission. So until next time on Fallacious Trump, we'll leave the last word to the Donald. That's right. Go home to mommy. Bye. Bye.